So let's begin our discussion by defining what a conservative force is. So basically, the work done by a conservative force on an object only depends on the object's initial and final position and is independent of the pathway taken by that object. Now, one very common example of a conservative force is the force of gravity. And the force of gravity fits this definition very well, as we'll see in just a moment. So, let's suppose we have the following two cases. In case one, I take a baseball with mass M, and I let it go from a height H above the ground. Now, at the same time, I take a second ball that is identical to the first ball, it has a mass M, and I let it go from the following frictionless inclined plane that makes an angle of theta with respect to the ground. Now notice in both cases, <clears throat> our vertical displacement along the y-axis is H. So basically what that means is that our initial and final points as the definition states are exactly the same, but the pathways our balls take differ. And if gravity is in fact a conservative force, that means the work done by the force of gravity on both of these objects should be exactly the same because our initial and final points are identical. So let's show that that is true. Let's find the net work done by the force of gravity on our object in case number one. So in case number one, the net force points in the same direction as displacement. And so that means to find the net work, I simply take my force, m times g, where m is the mass of the object, and multiply it by my displacement, because work equals force times displacement when the force points in the same direction as motion. So, this is exactly what we get in case one. What about case two? So basically, for the force of gravity to be a conservative force, case number two should also give us the same exact work. So let's begin by finding what our displacement along our inclined plane is. So now our motion is along the inclined plane, down the inclined plane. So I have to find my displacement down the inclined plane. And I also have to find my net force acting downward along my inclined plane. So I basically use my trig function sine. So sine of the angle of theta is equal to h divided by x, where x is this distance along our inclined plane. And I represent in terms of x, and I find that x is equal to h divided by sine theta. So that's my displacement along the inclined plane. Now, what is my force acting along the inclined plane? Well, it's the force of gravity, but it's not m times g. It's m times g times sine theta. So I get work done by gravity along our inclined plane is the force acting in the same direction as displacement. And so m times g times sine theta multiplied by x. And x is h divided by sine theta. And notice that sine theta is cancel. And we're left with m times g times h. So notice that in case 1 and case 2, our pathways differ, but our initial and final positions are identical. And that means because our work is also identical, force of gravity must be conservative. Now, one more definition of conservative forces is the following. A force is said to be conservative if the net work that it does on an object when the object moves in a closed pathway is zero. So that basically means that if I allow my ball to free fall downward and then I raise my ball upward to the same exact position, my net work done by gravity is zero. And that's exactly right because when my object is traveling downward, I have positive work. And when it's traveling upward, I have negative work because the force of gravity acts in the opposite direction of motion. So if I add up these two forces to find my net force, I get mgh minus mgh equals zero joules. So what about non-conservative forces? Well, a non-conservative force is simply a force that does not fit this definition. So the work done by non-conservative force does not only depend on the initial and the final position, but it depends on other things, such as velocity and the pathway taken. 
And a few examples of such forces include friction, air resistance, and the push or the pull of a person. So to prove or to show that, for example, friction is a non-conservative force, all we have to show is the following. We have to disprove this definition. We have to show that when an object is taken around a closed pathway, the net work done is not equal to zero. So for example, if we take the following box and we drag the box along the following closed pathway, the force of friction will always be in a direction opposite to motion. And so that means if we find our network, the network will not equal to zero. So that basically means that friction, just like air resistance, a drag force, and the push or pull of a person is a non-conservative force because the net work done over a closed pathway is not equal to zero. It's equal to some positive value.